We'd like for you to adopt many healthy habits that will elevate your body, mind, and spirit. As part of Move Up UCI, you're welcome to choose any that are of interest to you. So, for the next few minutes, we'll suggest some clear habits that you might want to try and some that might, you might like to give up. Of course, we recommend that you make the habits small and easy at first and anchor them to existing habits so that they become part of your everyday lifestyle. I'm not your doctor, so make sure you check with your doctor or healthcare provider before you make any lifestyle changes, including the ones we'll suggest. One of the most simple things you can do for better health is to give up drinking carbonated drinks. Not only are they usually loaded with added sugar, but drinks with bubbles contain phosphoric acid which is harmful to the calcium metabolism and diminishes bone mass. If quitting carbonation cold turkey is too much, try replacing soda with water for just one drink a day. Then build up as it becomes more palatable to you. I'm going to talk to you about the benefits of water. Drinking plenty of water throughout the day can promote healthy skin, flush toxins from our systems, lubricate joints, and it can support regular bowel movements. The Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics recommends having at least eight cups of water every day. So how do you make this a healthy habit? Every morning after you brush your teeth, drink a tall glass of water. And during the day, take a sip of water every time after you answer an email. You can choose your own anchor habit to trigger your drink, but it should be something that, you, that happens fairly frequently throughout the day. If you like a little flavor in your drinks, you can add a few slices of fruit to your water, like limes or strawberries. Hi, my name is Andrew Reed. I'm a first year medical student here at UCI. Although I'm not your doctor yet, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about weight training, resistance training. Now when I come to the gym, a lot of people tend to ask me, what's the best exercise for upper body, for lower body, for abs? Quite frankly and quite honestly, the best exercise is an exercise, and that's it. Whatever you do that keeps you moving is a great exercise. Don't worry about the one that's the most complex, or if you see somebody else that seems to be doing the world's greatest exercise. What they do is for them, what you do is for you. Whatever works for you, whatever gets you moving, that's what you need to do. If you like gardening, gardening's your best exercise. If you like swimming, swimming's your best exercise. If you like doing abs, an ab machine would be your best exercise. Whatever you wanna do to get you moving is the best exercise for you. Here's a quick tip to get you up and moving. Plan to take a walking meeting. Now, it might not be a viable option with a conference room full of associates, but with one or two people in the meeting, this might be very doable. There is much research available these days with strong scientific evidence that moderate to vigorous intensity exercise plays a significant role in preventing cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, obesity, and some cancers. But what you didn't know is that extended periods of inactivity due to sitting while at work or at home can also lead to these very same diseases, even if you exercise already. Dr. Len Kravitz, who is arguably the grandfather of cardiovascular exercise research, suggests the following tips to make sure you get up and moving throughout the day. Stand up and walk around the office every 30 minutes. Stand up and get some water. Walk to the farthest bathroom in the worksite facility if multiple bathrooms are an option. Always stand or walk around the room while talking on the telephone. Now, for the two hour time frame spent watching TV or reading, some of these options might also work. Get up and move every commercial break. Take a five minute walk break every 30 minutes. Set a stationary piece of cardiovascular exercise equipment near the TV and use it for several minutes every half hour. Stand up and do some easy, not strenuous lunges or squats at least once every half hour. It's important that you get up and get moving. To keep you more healthy, happy, and motivated, I'd like to encourage you to plan something fun that you can anticipate. We know that laughter can physiologically improve your health. Did you know that anticipating those laughs can also help? Lee S. Burke of Loma Linda University reports that not only is there real science and psychophysiology, but just the anticipation of quote, mirthful laughter, unquote, involved in watching your favorite funny movie has some very surprising and significant neuroendocrine hormonal effects. According to Burke, 
The blood drawn from experimental subjects just before they watched the video had 27% more beta endorphins and 87% more human growth hormone compared to the blood from the control group, which didn't anticipate the watching of a humorous video. That means you get a double dose of good when you plan something fun. You get the beneficial physiological response from the event, and you get another when you anticipate the event. Call your friends and make a date. Cue up your favorite movie. Put something on the calendar and look at it when you need a boost. If you're like I, you like to eat. I care about my health, so I brush and floss my teeth daily. Some people may forget to floss though. Brushing your teeth alone may not remove all the food in your mouth, especially in between your teeth. This trapped food then stays in your mouth and rots, which then gives off a distasteful smell. As the food is broken down by the bacteria in your mouth, they release sulfurous compounds that may smell like rotten eggs. Mmm. In addition to that, the rotting, rotting food also releases various acidic compounds, such as isovaleric acid, which smells like sweat. When all the rotting food, bacteria, and saliva stay in your teeth for an extended period of time, plaque is created. The acids from this plaque will then eat away at your teeth, which will then cause symptoms such as aching and sensitivity to hot and cold. By not flossing, the plaque may build up tremendously between the teeth and form cavities, which may progress deep into the pulp of the tooth where nerves reside. You're probably one of those who doesn't want a mouth that smells like an old shoe, so you, shouldn't, so you should floss. If you don't already floss, you'll probably want to start by anchoring your floss habit to something that you're already doing. How about anchoring it to teeth brushing? Most people brush their teeth already. We want to make the new habit as easy as possible for you. BJ Fogg suggests that if you want to start a new habit like flossing, you should start as small as possible. He says you should commit to flossing only one tooth after your anchor habit. Just one tooth. Then congratulate yourself. If you want to do more teeth after that one tooth, that's fine. In fact, you should, but just start with flossing one tooth. Keep up the good habit, and I'll look forward to seeing your bright smile in my office one day. About a year ago, I changed my eating habits from eating three large meals a day to eating five to seven smaller meals a day and snacking in between the big meals. And I noticed that I have a much better mood throughout the day. I noticed I have greater concentration, and I noticed that my metabolism is definitely staying higher. So what I would propose to you is, consider changing your eating habits as well. Instead of having three large meals, consider snacking in between meals. Now when I make this suggestion, I'm suggesting also that you decrease the size of those original three large meals. Some, some snacking suggestions include nuts, fruits, vegetables, maybe even throw in some ranch or something like that with a couple carrots. Whatever is good and nutritious for you is a great snack to have. And you'll start to notice exactly what I noticed. You'll notice that your mood is up throughout the day. You'll notice that you have greater concentration. You'll notice that your metabolism is going higher. So the greatest suggestion I can give to you is consider changing your eating habits. Consider eating more frequent snacks and less frequent large meals. Here's something to lift your spirits. Compile a song list of some of your favorite songs. These should be songs you associate with another good memory or a song that reminds you of a particularly fun time in your life. Use this playlist to consciously lift your spirits, whether you're having a good or a bad day, by anticipating how you will feel after listening to your favorite song or by reflecting on how good you felt at one time listening to that song will automatically enhance your mood. Try it out.